Today on BRS TV, we're going to do a quick product spotlight on the Ecotech line of Radeon LED lights. We'll hit on internal and external appeal, controllability, build quality, upgrade path, and warranty. Hi, I'm Ryan, host of BRS TV, where each week we hit on a new topic related to reefing. This week, we're going to review the extremely popular Radeon Gen 2 and Pro. A while back, we did a review of the Gen 1, which I personally used for over a year. My experience with the light was extremely positive. Corals responded well, nice color, the form factor is low profile, and the programming software was really easy to use. But that was then and this is now. So let's see how the newer models hold up. First off, they both got the same form factor, and externally I think they look really sharp, very low profile, and sleek. One change they did make is the ability to link them together with rail kits, which is nice. On the previous generation, we had made our own bracket out of a C-shaped aluminum bar, which worked out nicely and hid the cords, but not everyone has the tools around to make something like this. Internally, I think they've only improved upon the color options and intensity. In fact, they state that the average PAR has increased almost 50% with the new lenses and more powerful XTE Cree LEDs for the white and royal blue channels. The Gen 2 still includes the same popular channels of white, royal blue, blue, red, and green. I used a Gen 1 for around a year and I can honestly say I was very happy with the color combination. The tank was really stunning. Something reiterated by many of the other people I've known that have used them as well. However, they did elect to step it up a notch and offer a pro version of the Radeon which adds some additional color options with four indigo, four UV, and two yellow LEDs. This does come at a cost premium. These additional color channels look pretty insane alone, but used in conjunction with the other colors, the change is a bit more subtle. Really just adds a bit of fluorescence and pop. It's also theorized that this fuller spectrum will help with coral coloration and growth. So which one should you get? Well, honestly, I think this is somewhat like picking between a two and $3,000 TV. Side by side, you can absolutely tell the difference. But when viewed in your home, both look exceptional. My advice is if you've been good this year and your budget allows for it, get the Pro and be happy with your purchase. If you've already spent a fortune on the tank this year and this just isn't going to fly with your spouse, pitch the Pro, then back off and buy the Gen 2s to show how flexible you can be. Either way, you'll have a light from a manufacturer that's one of the few that's been doing this long enough to have developed a pretty refined product they can stand behind. Controllability is the next thing we're going to take a look at. On the system itself, there's pretty limited options with the use of these three buttons and no display. Some people will find this to be an irritation. Personally, I could care less. In fact, they turn these buttons off so I don't accidentally bump them. In my opinion, they have one of the most user-friendly programming software available. I can't imagine why anyone wouldn't want to use it. The program opens and allows you to easily adjust the spectrum at any point in the day. You can add as many points as you want, and then hit the demo mode to see what the results look like. Looking at this, it's really hard to imagine going back to the on-off function and lack of color control most of us had with T5 and metal halide lighting. Even cooler, if you use their browser-based version in what they call EcoSmart Live, it really walks you through the process of setting it up in a way anyone could understand. Input when you want them to turn on and off. Maximum intensity is from 0 to 100. Please resist the temptation to put these on 100 because it's likely too much par for most tanks. 50% is probably a good average starting point. Next set whether or not you want to set a lunar moon cycle and acclimation cycle. The acclimation cycle, I think, is one of the better ideas for LEDs. Most people don't own a PAR meter, and the tendency is to try to turn the lights on as bright as possible. Result is most people start too high and bleach their corals. This feature allows you to reduce the starting intensity and period of time over which will gradually increase the intensity of the light based on your programming. There really isn't a better way to slowly acclimate the lights to the new light source over many weeks. Lastly, it has some pretty solid options for generating programming cycles. Natural shallow reef, natural deep water reef, high growth, radiant color, traditional reef, and even a planted freshwater tank. While half of us will end up doing a custom program, the other half of us will really appreciate these pre-programmed settings. Next thing to consider is build quality. This type of thing is hard to evaluate completely, but I always look for cheap plastic components, cable fittings, and other areas of concern. The Radeon feels really solid in the hand, well machined, the heat sink is solid, and cable connection secure. 
The most important component of build quality to me is the ability to keep the LEDs cool because this is the number one factor in determining how long the LEDs themselves will last. Like most LED options out there, it uses a fan-driven heatsink. When the Radions first came out, there was a bit of discussion about the decision to face the fans downward with the fear they may suck up some salt mist. While this is understandable, the fear turned out to be largely unfounded, mainly because the fan is sealed off from the internal components, so there's little risk of damaging anything, and I know the units that I use never had any other issue than typical accumulation of dust. I can tell you that I prefer the ducted system they use, which maximizes airflow over the entire surface of the heatsink. Many of the less expensive models do have a fan, but if you take a close look at the design, it's more for form than function. I'm confident that the Radeon's cooling system is one of the better designs in our industry. One of the nice things about the Radeon is they allow for an upgrade path after new models have been released. Even though LED lighting technology has caught up to the point that has been widely adopted in reefing, it's constantly evolving. Providing the ability to upgrade makes it a lot easier to be confident about a purchase and its long-term viability. Honestly, LED lighting isn't cheap, so most of us would like these lights to outlast the life of the tank that we're putting them on. Right now you can upgrade your Radeon 1 to a Gen 2 or Pro for less than a third of the cost of buying it new. They even do all the work for you. You just need to send the light in for the upgrade. Honestly, I think it's a pretty good deal as compared to having to buy a brand new light years from now when you're considering that upgrade. The last thing I want to look at is support and warranty. The LED pucks are two years and everything else is one year. This is one year longer on the LED pucks versus most other major players. However, the biggest bonus is they're a manufacturer rather than a distributor for an imported product. They're located in the U.S. and respond to support inquiries quickly. Because they're assembled in the USA, they also have parts on hand in case you need them outside of the warranty period, something that's almost impossible on some of the cheaper imported models. That wraps up today's episode. If you have any questions about the Radeon lights or LED lighting in general, check out the comments area below. If this is your first time with us, give us a quick thumbs up and subscribe. See you all next week with another episode of BRS TV.